Hello, everybody. I am joined by Darren Elias, boss man, legend. I was just at a WPT event. It's hard to go to a WPT event and not think of Darren Elias. Welcome to the Poker Org. Darren, how are you? Good, good. Happy to be here. Good to see you again, Sarah. Happy holidays. And um, yeah, happy to be here. Things are good. Just living our best life. We were just um, talking a little bit about our children, which I think the last interview I did with you, I think I was pregnant at the time, but um, mm-hmm. we were talking about about parenthood, about being a a poker player with kids. And it just feels like the deeper into this thing we get, the more people who are joining this, yeah. <laughs> this side of things. Yeah. I finally just at the win this last time, I was like, okay, everybody's got their kids. Everybody's jumping. Like we're all doing it now. Everybody's got yeah. their nannies there. Um, <laughs> We're coming up on a big event here at the Borgata, the Borgata Winter Poker Open. I somehow have actually never even been to the Borgata, so I am very excited about this event and um, specifically about this partnership with BetMGM. You have a relationship with BetMGM and sort of to kick things off, I did just want to, they don't have a lot of, say, ambassadors. Um, Mm -hmm. For those who don't know about what BetMGM Poker is and what they're doing, talk to us a little bit about your relationship, why you've chosen to to represent them, and and um, some of the kind of I, don't, I think more exciting things that they're doing in in the poker space. Yeah, yeah, I am BetMGM's only poker ambassador at the moment. So I um, consult with BetMGM and work with them together on tournaments, offerings, both online and live. Because BetMGM, we do have online poker in Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Um, Some other smaller markets as well, but really looking to grow that online poker uh, community in the U.S. And um, really, that was one of the things when signing on with BetMGM that was important to me is kind of rebuilding online poker in America post post Black Friday, where we've been kind of a lot of American players have been forced to uh, play on shady, unregulated sites or uh, you have kind of limited options depending on where you live. So being able to um, provide a good product for online poker for, for American players. And then also using all of MGM's properties across the country to host live events now. And, and that, that's something that's been a passion of mine, kind of trying to put together um, that MGM organized uh, big tournament series with some prestige. And I think we're going to see more of that this year. I'm really excited. Hopefully we're, we're going to have a lot of these uh, bigger, bigger stage live events and Borgata in January, kind of our, our first one of the year. It's there's like no rest for the wicked. That's for sure. We're coming straight out of a absolutely bananas December and we are just right into it again in January. And we're not, we're not just like dipping our toes in here at the Borgata winter poker open. We are an entire month essentially of poker tournaments. And that's one of the things as a, uh, you know, someone who's been playing, live tournament series for a long time. When you look at something that's going three and a half weeks, what are, what are some of the ways that you both as a player and as someone who's helping to, you know, coordinate these types of events, what do you look at in a schedule? <laughs> like yeah. Say like, how do you, how do you build out a month of poker? It's a good question. I mean, it's from a, from a player's perspective, it's, I mean, in the casino as well, there's going to be, different events for different players. I I think there's very few players who go there and play every single event for three weeks. A a lot of people kind of circle some events on their calendar. It might be a price point they like or a game they like. Cause I mean, we have, we have uh, Omaha, we have bounty tournaments, we have Hold'em, we have shootouts, we have online, we have live, we have um, mystery bounty. So there's a little bit for everybody. and, And I think that's kind of our goal here and bringing from the Borgata's perspective, this is our first, series of this length kind of coming back where before COVID um, Borgata, obviously a mainstay in, in East coast poker tournaments, we kind of ran this winter poker open um, around this time in January, three, four week series and always kicking it off with one of these um, big guarantee, smaller buy-in events this, this year, it's a a $700 kickoff event, 2 million guaranteed. And and that's always a, a player favorite. I find where, thousands of players uh, in, in this tournament where you can enter for 700 bucks and win 200, 300,000. I mean, that, that's always an exciting one to start out with. Dude, that's the dream. And yeah. I, I know a ton of people that are going to be right there. And actually I will say for someone that's been 
doing a poker, a winter poker series for a while. I'm hoping that because we just came out of this um, really heavy December, that we've all got this sickness behind us and now we're ready for the borgata (laughs) we're going to be coming in so fresh and so healthy um so for you as you approach the series obviously with um i don't want to say like unlimited bankroll but let's say you have more bankroll than some of the players who are jumping in (laughs) (laughs) what is like how are you um approaching your schedule what are how are you looking at playing these these things I, I mainly focus on the bigger events towards the end of the series. So the ones I'm really excited about the the two thousand dollar mystery bounty that that was a that was a really fun one last year. I think they had a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar bounty that was still in there at the final table, something like that. Um, so that that's an exciting one. And then the main event, obviously fifty three hundred, um, probably a, close to a million dollars up top. That's exciting. And also we're trying this new thing, Bet MGM online with a hybrid event where we're going to play. Um, up to the final table online on bet MGM. So anyone in New Jersey can sign up and play this online event. And then we're going to play the final table live at Borgata and live stream it. So I'm excited about that one as well. Wow. That's super cool. And basically you just have to be in New Jersey. Then you don't have to live in New Jersey. You just have to be there while you're playing. Exactly. And anybody who's physically in the state is able to play. You don't have to be a resident or anything. So um, bet MGM too. We have this great online software. We've been working on working on upgrading that. And, uh, if you haven't played online um, in New Jersey, this will be a good uh, opportunity to try it. Yeah, so everyone will be in their hotel room that day. Got it. Got the room service will be popping off. Um, great. Um, well, I think it's something I was talking to some of the players at the win about, and I'm sure this is a question that you've been asked a million times, but I actually was kind of surprised by some of the answers and thought there was some really um, intriguing insights. For someone who's played a lot of these bigger fields, um, you probably are very well suited to answer. What do you think is one of the biggest mistakes that players make when playing this type of a tournament? I mean, this is going to sound maybe super simple, but I would say signing up late, late registering in these big field tournaments. And um, this is something I've talked about a bit where in a big field tournament, when there's thousands of players, you have to realize that the very worst players in that field, the weakest players, are not going to last very long. Like they're they're very weak players, and oftentimes if you're going to wait three or four hours to register, those players won't still be in the tournament. So they'll have been knocked out, them. and somebody has their chips, and you kind of miss your <laughs> opportunity to to take out these weaker players. And I mean, it, it's the same thing in any kind of tournament. Like if we, if we were to go play. Uh, a basketball tournament, a tennis tournament, a video game tournament, the weak players get knocked out quick. So you, you really want to be there in the opening levels. And I know a lot of people kind of use these excuses. Oh, the blinds are too low. The antes, the, it's meaningless the first couple levels. And um, speaking from experience, I can't tell you how many times I've stacked somebody at 100, 200 for a 100,000 chip pot. Like, like it, it just happens. And especially when there's weak players in there, that would be my number one tip to if you are taking this seriously and um, trying to win the tournament, do, doing your best, I, I recommend being there on time. I love that. And you did sort of touch on some of the other types of tournaments out there. And I heard a rumor that your daughter recently participated in a chess tournament. Yes. And yeah. uh, that this was like even more of a sweat for you than most of the <laughs> the poker tournaments you're in. Yeah. As, as a parent, like seeing your, your children compete is it's a unique feeling. I, I wasn't I wasn't ready for how I was gonna feel about that. So that that was interesting. She played the um National Elementary Chess Championship kindergarten division. So I'm <laughs> seeing her um mean mugging these other little kids across a chessboard was pretty was pretty entertaining. And uh just kind of a uh, just a hobby for her. Not, not not something we're taking super seriously, but she enjoys it and I, I think we'll go play uh another tournament in February. So uh that's a just a little fun thing we've been doing. Dude, who knew that chess was going to be like a spectator sport? Like you could just the parents like set up on either side and watch the whole thing go down. No, no, no. They they actually um, divide. They they when, once the game starts, they kind of kick you out of the. Uh, they send you to a room where you can't like signal them or something. If you were trying to like help your kid out, oh, move your piece there. They don't want you to be able to do that, so they uh, they put you on the other side of the room. Wow, then your okay. kid walks That's out it. and you're like, did she win? Did she lose? You try to judge by their face. So it's a, it's a little stressful as a, as a parent. 
<laughs> but as a poker player, you're pretty solid. You know, she's like, okay, she lost for sure. No, she won. Dude. She's fine. Look at her. Look Usually at her face. Usually tell when she's walking up. Yeah. Get a read. Well, you sort of touched on some of the potential softer players in the field that maybe they're there in the first couple of levels. Um, it is something we've seen, I think, with a lot of these bigger tournament series lately is that there's a certain number of online qualifiers, a certain number of sort of like giveaways, seat opportunities given to people who maybe are not, you know, as professional poker players um, as someone such as yourself. Is BetMGM doing a lot of things like that as well? Or are there going to be a lot of opportunities to maybe satellite in? Opportunities. Yeah, but BetMGM has been running online qualifiers. Um, so they're giving away these packages where you get to come play the main event from our markets, um, Michigan, New Jersey, PA. The, the only thing I would say with these online qualifiers, a lot of times they're pretty strong players because they have won poker tournaments um, online to qualify for this event. So while they may not be as strong as um, a professional player who's playing these buy-ins, um, live player going around traveling, um, still some of these uh, online players can be quite formidable and definitely um, – Tougher than some of the like random giveaways you'll see. Oh, pull someone from a slot machine and put them in there. So that's uh, a, little, a little different caliber qualifier, but we're, we're definitely putting in a lot of players. And I love the idea of giving someone an opportunity that plays smaller stakes because it's kind of something I, I had when I came up playing online. Um, I was playing smaller tournaments, a couple hundred dollars, and then you win a package to a big live event for thousands of dollars, get a flight, hotel, and go take a shot at a bigger event. I love the idea of giving uh, players an opportunity to do that. And Bet MGM's doing that again. Yeah, I agree. I think there was definitely a um, like a spin and go time, or like there was a few different types of of tournaments where you might you might have had a different caliber of player. But of course, yeah. most people who are <laughs> shipping regular uh, series online, um, and it's interesting. So, are you actually located in? Are you able to play online? Where do you live? Yeah, I live in New Jersey. So so, so I'm right here. I, I live um, in, in South Jersey. Uh, my wife's from New Jersey, been here almost 10 years now. So uh, I am in the I'm in these games. I'm on BetMGM playing online um, every once in a while in some of these bigger tournaments. Uh, so I, I'm out there in the streets. I'm playing um, and Borgata is just about an hour, hour drive for me. So I, I will be there. 